Hi, this is Mike from ZodiacRevisited.com. Today in this video I'm going to take you through using the Zodiac Killer Cipher Generator. Uh, as you can see on this page, the Cipher Generator has four different sections. The first is the message area where you put the message that you want to have enciphered. The second is uh, this control section which controls uh, the various different inputs that affect the generation of the cipher. Uh, the last two sections are output areas. One uh, is the generated cipher area, and then the second is the processed plain text area. So the plain text is essentially the deciphered um, cipher. Uh, that'll have all of the spaces and punctuation, etc., removed. So the easiest way to show you how this works is to go ahead and do an example. Uh, on this page I've got um, Crime and Punishment, uh, the novel, so I'm just going to grab a bunch of text and copy that and then we're going to paste that into the message section. And we just need to have enough text um, uh, we need to have more text than we want to encipher essentially and the uh, cipher generator will go through it or remove anything that's not a letter so it'll get rid of punctuation it'll get rid of quotes it'll get rid of um, spaces and in the end we'll end up with just uh, a sequence of letters in the control section um, these are the variables that we have in terms of affecting the cipher. Um, the plain text can either be all uppercase or all lowercase. Um, that's really just kind of a personal preference thing. The output uh, can either be numerical or ASCII. So uh, homophonic substitution ciphers need to have a lot of different symbols and uh, it's very typical for people just to use straight numbers when dealing with homophonic substitution ciphers. And in some sense, that's, um, in my opinion anyway, the easiest way to think about it. Um, but at the same time, another convenient and, in, and as we'll see, more compact way to represent the cipher is to actually use printable ASCII characters. And uh, those are the two choices that you have here, either numerical or ASCII. Uh, we have a couple of preset configurations, one for the 408 and one for the 340. And then also you can use your own custom configuration. So let's look at the 408 configuration. Uh, the first primary variable is the cipher length. So in the 408, um, uh, we have 17 columns and uh, the way that the current cipher lengths are calculated is that we assume the cipher content will extend at least into the first character of the last row and therefore uh, in the case of the 408 the length would be 392. Uh, the number of symbols uh, the 408 had 54 different symbols and both the 340 and the 408 had 17 columns. Uh, there's a seed value here. I'll come back to that in a minute. And finally, uh, the question is, uh, do we fill in the end of the row uh, just like the Zodiac Killer did? So presumably the cipher content ends in the last row and, um, you know, the killer filled in the end of the row so that um, the end of the cipher looked, uh, it was not easy to tell where the end of the cipher was. Um, for, and potentially other reasons, especially with respect to the 408. Okay, so now that we have that uh, filled out, let's go ahead and generate the cipher using the preset for uh, 408 values. And uh, as you can see, we're using numerical uh, uh, numerical output. So this is our enciphered uh, 408 like version of the initial part of Crime and Punishment. Now our symbols range uh, from 1 to 54 
you can see we have one here and some various other places and 54 right there is a 54 so we have the expected uh, symbol count we should have every symbol in between um, in 17 rows and the content length is 408 now um, if we look at the processed plain text uh, basically we're taking the all the symbols uh, from the cipher and we're replacing the symbol with its plain text character and you can see the message here on an exceptionally hot evening in early uh, evening early in July there we go um, so and uh, also you can tell that the uh, cipher ends probably with this tick and then that these remaining characters are actually random characters that are chosen to fill in the last row to the end of the row. Now let's go back and change a couple of the variable, variables. Um, actually why don't we just go ahead and select the three, 340 uh, preset and you'll see that a lot of the characteristics of the ciphers stay the same except the length has been shortened uh, considerably and similarly we have the same plain text up through a shorter a shorter version of the cipher um, now let's try uh, varying some of the other uh, controls that we have so first let's do something really easy we'll just change the plain text to lowercase instead of uppercase. Some people might find that easier to read. And let's change uh, the output from numerical to ASCII. And as you can see, it is much more compact. It's a little, you know, little, this, this is a very easy for computer programs to read. Uh, but uh, for humans, I would think the numbers are probably easier to read. But both of them work just fine. Uh, as you can see for the 340, we have a cipher length of 324, uh, number of symbols 63, and again the columns are 17. All right, let's go back to numerical. And uh, regarding the seed value, so, uh, you know, when we generate the cipher, there's a lot of randomness involved and uh, but what we want to have happen is that when we configure our cipher to be generated we would like to get the same cipher uh, when we use the same inputs so uh, in computer science terms that's known as being deterministic so uh, at the same time we could for various reasons want to have the same inputs and then get different random values. And the way we achieve that is through setting a particular seed. Now this particular library that's providing the seed mechanism for the JavaScript uh, is a string-based library, so we can provide any string that will seed, quote unquote, the algorithm. So for example, we could just put A here and we regenerate and you'll see that we get different numbers. 5, 19, 45 is how we start. So we can change this to B, and we have different numbers still, 23, 43, 61. But now if we go back to A, we get the same numbers, 5, 19, 45. So most of the time you probably don't need to worry about this, and it's perfectly fine just to leave it empty. Uh, but if you are doing some serious testing of some type of uh, decryption software, there may be occasions where you would want to do something specific with a seed. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's try some custom ciphers. So instead of the normal cipher links that we've done thus far, let's try a cipher length of 500 and the number of symbols let's crank this up to something really high like 100 uh, 
leave the columns at 17 and do numerical output that sounds good and you can see we have much longer output here and we have a 100 there and we have a one here perfect now interesting thing happens if we click over to ASCII and try to do the same thing we'll get an error because as it turns out uh, there are the this particular program only has 91 printable ASCII characters available so if you try to use more than 91 symbols and you select ASCII it will not be able to do it um, I can't quite remember if I'm using all the printable ASCII or if I might have left a couple out for certain reasons but let's take this number of symbols and reduce it down to 91 and now we're able to generate the output okay so I think that covers all of the different um, all of the different aspects of using the Zodiac Killer Cipher Generator um, as I mentioned this can be uh, very useful for testing and evaluating Cipher uh, decryption software and you know potentially other things if you just want to generate your own cipher. Uh, thank you for watching and um, be sure to visit zodiacrevisited.com. Thank you. Goodbye.